Hi, this is Summer from Summer's Tips and Stitches, and today I'm finally doing that video about the multimedia painting, using crochet and painting together. As you can see back here, this is the first painting that I did that involved crochet. Um, I tend to be an inspiration-focused um, artist, whereas I don't make the things up myself, unfortunately. I look at a bunch of pictures online, and I get my ideas from there. And so I saw something online once that looked similar to this and I thought you know what I'll try it out myself so what I did was I looked up a bunch of tutorials online for different flowers that I could crochet so all of these came off of YouTube tutorials I sewed a bunch of buttons and as you can see now in the bed that it's closer to the camera I did some background painting today I'll show you the process of how to do something like this and the things that you'll need back here for the video. So first you're going to need a canvas, which in a minute I'll show you. I'll have to turn the camera, so we're going to wait on that. But I have my paint brushes. I have my paint right here. And like I said in one of my wine painting glasses, I usually use children's divided plates for my paint palettes. Um, the glue that I use to glue the crochet to the painting is E6000 water from rinsing my brush, paper towel for cleaning off my brush. Um, one of the other um, types of paints I'll be using are paint pens. I got these at Walmart. I'm going to be honest, personally I thought they were a little spendy. These were like, I want to say like $8.97. So I use these two. These are regular acrylic paints. I think these ones my husband got at Hobby Lobby. Um, so I have those. I'm going to use this paper bag as a way to smear my paint to get the right kind of color I want. And then I also have a bunch of crocheted flowers. A few years ago, I don't know if you saw, when I first was learning to crochet, there were these beautiful flower um, paintings, or no, not paintings, curtains that people made. And they hung them above their kitchen windows. So I crocheted literally like, I want to say I have 50 or 60 of these. Well, then after a while, I was like not really interested in making that curtain anymore after I crocheted all those flowers. So I kind of bagged them up, stuck them underneath my craft table. Underneath this table is a big jum jumbled mess of craft. So I have a bunch of flowers that I can use for this. And then I crocheted some stems. The, the yarn that I use today is cotton. So today I'm using cotton. This one is Karen Simply Soft Acrylic. Um, I found that either work fine, but definitely the E6000. I suppose you probably could use hot glue, but um, I always feel like I'm out of outlets and the cords aren't long enough and I always burn myself on hot glue. So I like to use the E6000. Um, then I also got some gemstones. Today, these are I bought these at Walmart. A few years ago, I glued them on wine glasses. I thought maybe I might feel inspired to use them today. Um, <clears throat> so now I'm going to turn the camera so you can see my painting or my palette and my um, my palette and my easel. And I'm going to start with the background. That's the first thing you should do is start with your background. So for this one, I'm not going to have any um, sketching. If you were going to do something, like, let's say a flower pot, I would pencil in the flower pot here or wherever you want to use it and then do your painting to cover up the pencil marks. But this time I'm just like freestyling it. So basically what I'm going to do, I hope, <laughs> is I'm going to blend some light yellow across the top third and then kind of fade it into a blue right here and maybe like the bottom two-thirds or maybe the top third I don't know I'm focusing on yellow on the top blue on the bottom and then after that dries that is when I will do the gluing so I'm just gonna smear this on because it's my backdrop maybe I should use a more fancier word than smear I'm just gonna paint this on um, because it's my backdrop, I'm not getting um, super fancy. It's not like I'm going to cover the whole thing. I want it to look 
kind of light. I want a thin color. And um, I, I don't want a solid background. I'm not really, one, I'm not really, I don't have the patience for that. And two, I like this mystical look, I think, or whimsical look. So um, after I get this yellow more evenly applied, I'll move on, I'll pause the camera, get some work done. Then I'll turn it on right before the blue. But the other thing I want to say real quick is if you're using one of these canvases that you can get like a Hobby Lobby or Walmart, you're going to want to do some painting along this edge. It's going to look real crazy if you just paint this front and leave the other edge completely white. Now again, because I'm not doing solid up here, I'm not going to do a solid down here. I'm just going to dab it on. Okay? Okay, so I finished my yellow. Now the one thing that I want to be very careful about when I move to my sky blue color is that I don't, if you remember, yellow and blue makes green. <laughs> so I'm not going to want to overlap personally my blue and my yellow because I don't want green in here um, other than the stems so I'm gonna let this dry for a second as you can see maybe you can't I just smeared it on do you see all that white gapping and whatnot I just I got the top along the edge but I didn't do a full you know covering it's not completely covered it's just whipped across and this is the motion that I used Maybe someday I'll look up technical terms. So when this dries a little bit, I'm actually going to pick up my blow dryer and I'm going to blow dry it. And then I'm going to do the same swooshing technique with the light blue on the bottom for that. And I'm not going to mix them because I don't want any green. All right, I'll see you in a second. All right, so now I got my light sky blue. You see I'm doing my wispy motions, applying it on there. What I'm going to do is you can see, especially in this video, you can see right here that like kind of dark look. I have a special paintbrush I'll show you in a moment that I'm going to use to um, kind of make that line look less um, bold, if you will. But this is what I'm doing, just smearing it on. I'm not very delicate with my paintbrushes, so I am not someone that buys really fancy paintbrushes. Um, to be honest, I'm not really even 100% a fan of paintbrushes. Sometimes I like to use cotton or um, sponges, tissue. I'm going to have to do some thinking because if you look, it looks very the blue is looking more solid than the yellow. So I think I might have to add some more. But when I'm all finished, well this one's going much faster than the yellow too I might add. Um, I'm gonna pause, finish this up, and then this will be dry and we'll be ready to glue on the flowers. All right. Okay, so this is the fancy brush that I was gonna try to use to kind of fuzz that line between the blue and the yellow, but not make green. Um, to be honest, the reason I thought to use this is because it looks a lot like the makeup brush that you use when you're applying your, your highlighter and your blush. And so that is what I was thinking would help soften that line. Because painting your face isn't much different than painting a canvas. No, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I really like it. I mean, I don't know if it's doing the exact technique that I wanted. This is what it looks like all covered up in paint. Kind of weird. But that was... If you actually look, to be honest, I really don't mind the look of this. Kind of gives it kind of a different textured paint. Like it's a little thicker with a fan. It gives it a look of like fingers, maybe. I'll do a whoosh and come show you. A little closer. Maybe I'll paint to pick it up. Do you see those like, I'm going to point to one right there. Right there. That's what 
that brush, that kind of marking that brush did. So that's something to keep in mind when you're doing your own paintings, is what each brush, what kind of a technique or style or look it will give to the painting. So I'm almost done with my blue. And then we got to let this thing dry. Okay, so the next part that you're going to want to do, or what I'm going to do, <laughs> is I'm going to try to eye up on this canvas where I'm going to put my flowers. Now, to be honest, maybe it wasn't that great of an idea to do a yellow flower. Unless I have a shorty. Maybe I'll have a couple shorties. Or like a half and half. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Kind of get a feel for where I want to put them. And I think personally I'm going to put the flowers up first and then I'm going to do the stems. Um, I think I'll have room for five flowers. I like to do things in odd numbers. So that is what I'm going to do is I think do five across and then do my stems. So let's be bold <laughs> and do the first one. I'm going to do a pink flower. Now I will tell you that if you get this glue on your fingers, it's a mess. So this is the E6000. I'm going to look for something pokey because it is like a, I want to say like a silicone -y glue. And after I use it and I um, put the cap on, I always have this like icky bubble or a dried up glue bit. I got to try to get out of there so I can get the real the glue out. This stuff stinks really bad, just so you know. Um, so keep that in mind. If you're someone that's really particularly sensitive to sm smells, or if you have maybe an infant, maybe you would want to do this in a well-ventilated area or outside. Um, I'm fine personally, but it, I'm going to be honest, it does not smell delicious. So when I apply the, fl the glue to the back of my flower, I'm going to do it on the areas that are the highest. Like if you were to hold it like this, because I feel like this is the part that's going to stick to the, um, the board better. And I like to use my glue sparingly. I'm not going to cover this whole thing because you don't really need to. So I'm going to apply it around this ridge. For you crocheters, this is where I did all those double crochets around my center chain. And then I'm going to put one dot in each because I don't want this to be stuck completely flat to my canvas. I want to have that three-dimensional look. So I'm squirting my glue. It's actually coming out pretty rough. It's not coming out really nice today because I probably... So I'm putting it on this ridge. The other thing, personally, I don't know if this bothers you guys, anybody personally, this glue does not dry clear. So keep that in mind if you're someone that gets kind of messy, like me. You'll have to remember that this stuff doesn't dry clear. Plus, it comes off your fingers almost as horribly as super glue. So keep that in mind if you get it on your hands. And so sometimes, this is the hardest part for me, is starting it out. But sometimes you just got to suck it up, get it on there, <laughs> and roll. So there it is. There's the first one. Isn't it beautiful? Now I'm going to do a multicolor one. Same thing. I'm going to apply it around to the ridge where all the double crochets went around the center chain. Because that's the part that's sticking out the most. And then I'll put a dab in the center of each of my petals. Kind of like soup, but like hot glue. This glue is stringy. So I'll put one there. The nice thing though, it's not coming through. Um, I think I'm going to put this one lower. Maybe right here. So, because I'm going to do long stems coming down, when I go to glue the flower, I'm going to put it kind of between these. 
Um, and that's what I'm just jabbing, dabbing on the glue. So I'll pause before we go to the next part. There it is. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so I glued on all my flowers. The next thing I'm going to do is I made two green chains, single or uh, chains. And then what I did here is I made a little bump out on this one so it had a leaf. And I'm just going to glue this one here. And then I'm going to glue this one here because they're nice and long. They're chains of 54. The other thing that I did in order to hide the end is if you look at a chain of crochet, they have the, the front part that looks like little V's. But if you turn it on, they have the bumps. You can turn it sideways. And so I cut off the end and I, tuck, I weaved the end through the back bumps. And so the front is going to have this nice pretty side, whereas this side is going to be the side that I glue to the picture because that's where I tucked in my tails. This one's going to be a little bit more messy, I think, because I'm going to have to dab the glue, get that here, and like, maybe not messy, but longer. It's going to take me longer, and I like to be quick. So I'll glue this one on. Maybe I'll do this one for the video so we can see. Um, so there's my first dab of glue. It's kind of big, to be honest. So. Because remember, it does not dry clear. Whew, I'm making a hot mess over there now. But I also do not want to get this stuff on my fingers. I don't remember. I was gluing something for the kid's toy the other day. Because I also will glue kids' things together when they break it. With this glue. And it got all over my fingers and it was a disaster. So... I really, I've had this painting, the other one that I showed you when I first started, I've had that painting for a pretty long time, almost a year, and nothing has fallen off of it. Now granted, it's been in my bedroom, so it's not like the kids have had a chance to destroy it, knock it off the wall or something. So, I mean, this part is where your artistic design, um, design comes in. Are you someone that's going to want it to look perfect? Or are you okay if your stem is a little crooked or curves to the side? I think I said this in another video. Um, I'm not always completely... I try to be perfect, but then I realize, you know what? Nature's not perfect. So if I have a mess up, it's not the end of the world. But I tend to be a bit of a, like, in my mind, a perfectionist. But then I'm like, you know what? Not everything is perfect. Some flowers have five petals. Some have four. Maybe a child or an animal knocked it off. Knocked off one of the petals. Oh, someone. Okay, so there we go. There's my first one. Here's my second stem. Like I said, because these were so long... I'm going to have to use them for the higher up. I'm just putting a little dab right where I want to start it. Pushing it on. This, might, this video might be a little longer than typical. I haven't really decided how long they really should be. I know that um, some of you fellow crafters that have channels will have like 15, 20 minute long videos. Um, sometimes I just put up like a five minute video. I don't know what's best. I noticed in my statistical setting of my YouTube that it said something like 30% of my videos were actually being watched. So then I thought maybe they were too long and folks were getting bored. So then I started making them shorter. So you can put down, you can put a comment there on if you think, if you like the longer ones or the shorter ones. Now right here I have a bit of a problem. Because of where I, I can't find my scissors either. But because of where I put the leaf, I did a single chain and then I came back and looped it here. Now this part of my chain is backwards. 
Now that's not going to bother me. I'm just going to let it go. But I think that's something you might think about if you are crocheting. Maybe I shouldn't have let my chain twist. So the top half looks perfect. And now this side has the bumpy showing through. I don't know how I feel about that right now. Oh, and this one's also not coming out perfectly straight like that other one. And my glue is getting globby. Maybe a little pushing. I'm actually really liking this. The next thing that I'm going to do, if you're thinking ahead, is I'm going to work, I'm going to do the stems in paint and maybe a paint pen for the other flowers because I only have two crochet chains. Okay, I'm going to pause for a second and get my gluey fingers. See that? Yuck. Get my gluey fingers. Okay, I'm painting again. This time I'm ready to paint on my stems. I'm using the cap of my paint bottle to hold my paint and I'm just going to do a nice stem all the way down. Oh, you can't see that at all on the camera. That's what I'm doing. Apparently I'll have to layer it. But some of these stems I'm going to have leaves on. This one, apparently, this one I'm going to. Some of them will only have one leaf. And you know what? I just decided I'm going to put a leaf, a painted leaf, with that crochet stem. Right there. Okay, I'm going to move the camera a little closer because apparently you can't see. There we go. I need to find a better way of doing that. Okay, so I'm going to work on some of these while I pause it, because we're already, like, at 22 minutes. Yikes. Okay, so something else I'm going to do, as I just painted on all these stems, is I'm going to add a different shade of green to my flowers. And I'm I left it kind of wet because I want to mix it together, because like I've said, nothing in nature is perfect, so nothing is going to be completely one color. So I'm just dabbing on a little bit to add dimension. Now if I were a true artist, I would like figure out where the light source is and make it darker on the other side. But I'm not. I'm a creative artist. Um, <laughs> and I, don't, I never really took, I mean I took a couple art classes in high school and college. That's how I know you need to look for the light source. But I don't actually practice that in any of my work. And uh, so you just use the wetness of the other color to help blend in to give it kind of a look of true nature of not being like perfectly one color. So, yeah. so that's what I've got there. There's all my stems. I'm actually thinking about getting a third green. I'm using three different color shades. So we'll get right back to it. Okay, so the final step that I'm going to do for this painting is I'm going to take my paint markers and I actually just came up with this idea right before doing this video and I am going to, I don't know how I'm going to like it, but I actually saw this on another thing. I'm going to draw around my flowers, maybe just trace the shape of it, maybe put some dots, maybe put some swishes in there. Um, at this time, I don't think I'm going to do one on all of them, but I may end up doing that. So, you know, it's one of those things where you got to bite the bullet and get started. The one thing I'm a little concerned about is that these are more fluorescent than I like. But yeah, so I'm just going to go around, adding a little bit of the more of the multimedia. Maybe I might need to make that fatter. You can't even see it at all on there, can you? So while I'm doing this, I'm going to talk about some of my plans for my channel here. Um, this sounds pathetic, but I'm super excited. I have 16 subscribers. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. It's moving, moving quicker. I started this channel I actually started filming videos in January. 
and then I um, I started filming my videos in January and so I've had it up for a month and a half but what I'm saying is I'm going to do a giveaway um, so I don't know necessarily what I thought about making something and using that as a giveaway I don't know or I thought about giving away yarn because I know everybody loves yarn okay I'm going to I guess I'll just bring it up to you so this is what I did to the first flower I just took the marker and drew around it I gave it a center and I went around with two different colors um, so I will pause the video work on some of these others and um, yeah so let's think about a yarn giveaway um, and maybe some other time I'll give away something I made during the video but I'm gonna pause this because like I said we're getting kind of up in the minutes and work on these others and I'll show you what we've got something I added while I was finishing the stems is I added another flower and then I glued some gemstones to the center of each of those flowers now what I'm trying to figure out now is what I want to do, if anything, with this blank space up here. Um, let's see if I can turn this. It's unfortunate because you can't really see very well the, what I did with the paint markers. Well, you can sort of see it now like right up here this is the one I actually like the best right there but that's what the painting looks like now just some flowers some stems some blue and yellow I could do some fun swirls but I hate to do anything like I said I hate to do anything that's too creative because I'm not I don't feel like I'm there yet. I could also put on a couple more flowers and really really add a maybe a pink one there and a multicolored one there might help. But then I don't have any stems for those because that's a quite a long way for a stem. But I might just do that. I might put a couple flowers right here. But otherwise I'm going to finish the video now and because um, like I said we're all 28 minutes I've never had a video this long um, once we hit a subscriber count because this is the giveaway information once we hit 50 subscribers and we're at 16 so that's a long way to go I will give a skein of yarn one a mandala there, I just grabbed one right there skein of yarn that color path um, and then when we reach a hundred subscribers I'll give away more yarn <laughs> that's a little thing or unless you put some comments that you want something else because I do have a lot of yarn I don't mind sharing so that's where we'll go first a skein of yarn to 50 subscribers and you have to comment probably let's just stick with it um, in this video you have to um, you have to make a comment so I know because I can't figure out how to find and I don't think I can find the list of my subscriber names so you'll have to make a comment in the videos under the section if you're watching it on your phone you have to scroll for a while or if you're watching it on your computer there is a section for comments and you can put your name in there and say hey I'm one of your subscribers and or not don't put your name in there I guess we'll have to figure this out I don't know how people do this I've never done it I mean obviously I'm gonna need your name <laughs> if I'm going to send you something I think I'll have to do a little bit of research on that but I have plenty of time because we have 16 subscribers and I need to get to 50 so I'll figure that out and uh, on how I choose someone to win something a mandala cake and then this is like 80% done 
for my painting with crochet, with paint markers, with acrylic paints. That is what I've done today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking or sharing my video. And happy crafting.